<laughs> All right, check it out. I goofed. That rabbit was supposed to be on the other side. And so I found some material that matched close. You know, mistakes, yeah, they're going to happen, right? Let's fix this. So I went through my fall off pieces and I found a section that matched in grain pattern and in tone. At this point, it's plenty long and it's wider and thicker than the misplaced rabbit, right? Here I cleaned up the face and the edge to be glued with a hand plane. And then using a draftsman's circle guide, I transferred an inch and three eighths diameter, which matched the router bit. This is my belt sander platform. I use this thing all the time. I have a full size edge sander, but sometimes this thing's just quicker and easier. Plus I have a multitude of different size grits and just makes things really easy to shape little items like this. This is probably a hundred grit belt to start. I'll sand right up to the line and then check the fit. And there's a little bit of a gap, but we're getting close. Now you can always use a finer grip belt that's gonna take off material a lot slower. The caveat, of course, is that it's going to leave burn marks, especially on end grain. So here, I think I'm using a 120 grit to sneak up on a perfect fit. Okay, now that we like the fit, we'll just mark that, we'll cut that to length, right? Now when I took this photo, it probably made sense, but now I'm like, yeah, I'm not really sure why I took that. Here's my 0.7 millimeter pencil. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so here you can see the piece is slightly long, it's a little bit wide, and proud in height. Plenty of glue squeeze is ultimately important here, and a couple of squeeze clamps to clamp the width. And that gray cowl that you can see there, that's a piece of plastic, like a piece of polypropylene. The glue will not stick to that, and I can clamp the thickness. And then ultimately, one last clamp for the length. You've got to be careful with this one because it can really clamp, put a lot of clamping pressure. But now we know everything's tight. And you'll notice I always record the, the glue up time. All right, so it's been, let's see, yeah, it's about one o'clock, so plenty of time for something like this. Now, I need to add something really quick. If you were gluing up slab doors and gluing those up, sure, in 30, 40 minutes, that glue is dry in that part or a door, drawer front, whatever, you can handle it, but you don't want to get it flush just because the glue is set up. And here's why. There's moisture in that glue. The uh, wood is going to expand in this area. If you were to look at this joint under magnification, it would be peaked right where that joint is. So if you flatten that, level that, hand plane, sander, however you do it, and you get that flush, over the next 24 hours, that glue or moisture in the glue is going to dissipate and it's going to shrink down and it will leave a little divot. Probably won't show if you're using an oil type finish, but if you're using a top coat type finish, it will show up. For something like this, very small, totally insignificant. All right, let's see how we did. Not bad, right? And you can see I didn't even get this all this glue off. You can still see pencil mark there. But uh, this will get flushed up, of course, and should be a pretty uh, inconspicuous repair. Now, there are a lot of ways to do things. I could have flipped this over and put the Wenge veneer on this side, but then I would have had to have make another left uh, by doing the same thing on the back side. So, yeah, a lot of ways to do things, but mistakes hyphenate the word. <laughs> take one, take two, as many takes as it takes. All right, all the rabbits are complete. Repair is finished, now I can move on. All right, there's the panels, the four panels all made. And this mistake that I repaired, it goes on the back side, so it'll never be seen. But even so, 
there it is. I mean, it just blends so well. All right, check it out. Fabulous repair. You can kind of see that focus. You can kind of see the grain difference and a little bit of a curve right in there. But it took me a while to find it. I couldn't remember which panel it was on. So, yeah, as they say in Italian, noche male. <laughs> Not bad. Right on. So there's one of them. So this is a pair. There's the other one over there. And so I wanted this, I wanted to create this illusion that this leg or this panel, really, this curved panel, and I wanted it to look like the tenon part came all the way through the top. And so that's this end grain, this oak end grain within this Wenge background is to create that illusion, right? And this is actually the backside. And here's where that mistake was right in here. Yeah, blended, blended very well. This is the front side and there's a left and a right. And the reason I say there's a left and a right, they look identical except Hey, what's going on here? <laughs> it's a drawer. So there's a one with a drawer on the left and one with a drawer on the right. 15 degree bevel here. And then I had put magnets in here. So at the last little bit that, boom, pulls that tight. Boom. Hidden in plain sight. So I truly hope you've enjoyed this video. You know, mistakes are just a part of woodworking or life, yeah? Thanks a ton for watching.